Hi ladies, in this video I will be talking about chapters 3 and 4 from the textbook that you're using called The New Testament by Stephen Harris. Um, I do want to start with chapter 3, which does make the assertion that there are three different cultures or three different worlds that influence Christianity, Judaism, the Greek culture, and Roman culture. And so chapter 3 is about the Jewish culture and chapter 4 is about the Greeks. Um, so there are some, some basic things that were important to Jewish people that is good for you to understand. Uh, one of those things is for you to understand that the Jewish people were monotheistic, meaning that they believed in one God. This was definitely untrue for most other religions around the time that uh, Judaism started to develop. So they were one of the first, if not the first religion, to believe in one single God. Um, they called their God Yahweh. This is not a name that you'll see them write or say because they believe that God is, God's name is so sacred that you can't even say it out loud. It can't pass over your tongue. So they might use the word Adonai or they might put G slash D in writing, uh, but they believe in one single God. Another thing that's important to them is the Torah. They have a sacred collection of writings called the Tanakh, but the Torah is the most important within that. And these are the first five books of the Bible. In a Christian Bible, Catholic Bible, we would refer to that as the Pentateuch. And the Torah books um, express the laws that the Jewish people follow. So out of there they pick or they find 613 laws that govern things like their dietary rules or um, hygiene rules and who you can associate with and who you can't. Another thing that is good for you to understand is something called the covenant. So a covenant is a loving agreement and this covenant was forged first with Abraham but through through various leaders in the Jewish faith, um, David being another very important one. Another thing the book will highlight for you is the temple. The Jerusalem temple was really important. David had this idea to build a temple and um, it didn't really happen until after he died and his son Solomon was the uh, Pharaoh or the king sorry and so Solomon made that happen and he built this beautiful ornate temple it was made with gold and acacia wood and uh, it sat on this hill and kind of glowed because of all the gold that was in it and the Jewish people would make a religious pilgrimage to this temple they tried to do this um, I think once in their lifetime but maybe more often than that so this was a place of prayer, and they really believed like God resided there in the temple, especially in the Ark of the Covenant, which was found in a room called the Holy of Holies. Um, so those are some key things important to Jewish people. Chapter 3 will also talk about different kinds of Jewish people that Jesus may have encountered. Um, the first group is called the Sadducees, and these were a group of like upper-class Jewish people. The Sadducees would have uh, controlled what was called the Sanhedrin, which was a Jewish court system, and they had a lot of clout, and they really believed in reading the Word of God and taking it pretty literally, but they didn't really believe in listening to any kind of oral tradition or any kind of oral teachings that deviated from the Word of God. And so the Sadducees could kind of bend things according to how they wanted to read them because they were just looking at the Word. The next group are the Pharisees. The Pharisees are kind of villainized in um, some of the Gospels as people that were really critical of Jesus and possibly responsible for his death. The Pharisees were known for um, a very strict following of the law, but both written and oral law. And um, they really focused on the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law. And as a result, they were depicted in the Gospels as being very hypocritical, although Jesus does spend quite a bit of time with them. Another group um, are a group of people who met in around 90 to 100 AD at an academy called the Jamnia Academy. And this group of people um, had to deal with what, it, what does it mean to be Jewish after the temple is destroyed. Another group that you'll read about, the Zealots, were people in favor of violent rebellion against the Romans and they waged a revolt against the Romans, even though they were completely outnumbered and it made no sense at all. And when the Romans responded to that, they destroyed the temple that Solomon had built. And um, actually, Herod the Great had kind of taken a temple. The temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in the Old Testament times, then rebuilt. And then Herod the Great kind of added on to it. And this is the temple that the Romans destroyed 
around 70 AD. So this council <coughs> or academy of Jamnia had to gather and talk about, you know, how can we still be Jewish if we don't have a temple to go to? And if we believe God lived in the temple, then what does that say about God? And they also would have discussed the canon um, of the Old Testament. However, there's a lot of um, kind of controversy over what kind of decisions were made about the canon there. Uh, most theologians today think that the canon was pretty much already kind of set by then for the Old Testament. Um, another group that was important were the Samaritans. They're kind of depicted in the Gospels as the enemy of the Jewish people. I think the Samaritans were a group of people that kind of developed during the Babylonian exile, and so there was some sort of intermarriages between the Babylonians and the Samaritans. Samaria was a region in between Galilee and um, Judea. Judea is where Jerusalem was and where the temple was. And so if you were a simple kind of um, blue-collar worker and you lived in Galilee and you wanted to go to Jerusalem, you had to travel through Samaria. And so there was a lot of fighting with the Samaritans, even though the Samaritans considered themselves Jewish and um, practiced a kind of specific brand of Judaism and they had their own temple. Um, and actually this group still exists today and they still worship their form of what they consider Judaism. Another group are the Essenes who I already mentioned were the ones that kind of tried to overthrow the Romans unsuccessfully. And then another group is called the Essenes. And the Essenes we believe were a group of scholarly, probably men who took vows of celibacy and lived in the desert away from society and kept a collection of books that are later found in the 1940s in um, the Qumran region. And they're known, the books are known famously as the Dead Sea Scrolls and you'll read about them and kind of how the Dead Sea Scrolls help us understand the time of Jesus. So those are all the different types of Jewish people that Jesus would have kind of rubbed shoulders with. The big debate at the time um, in the first century was whether Jesus was the Messiah or not. The Jewish people were expecting um, someone who would be a military leader, who would be powerful and wealthy and affluential, and would re return um, that same kind of perspective of Jewish people to that time and would retain some wealth for them and power. Um, and this is definitely not what Jesus did. And so there was still debate among the people in that first century over whether he was the Messiah. And essentially by the end of the first century, you were either Christian or Jewish. At the time of Jesus' death and for the 30 years after that, you could potentially have been both Jewish and Christian, but eventually there was a line drawn and you had to decide one way or the other. Um, chapter four is about the Greek culture and it gives you some insight into some different uh, people or you know, mythological characters that would have been familiar to early Christianity and would have impacted um, their stories and their teaching. One person that's really important is Alexander the Great. He was an emperor at the age of 20 and he kind of had the largest empire that any people had ever seen in the known world at that time. He actually died very young at 32, but in that time he conquered more land and peoples and um, brought a lot of power and wealth to the area. And the Jewish people, even at the time of Jesus, really were still emulating the Greek culture. And to emulate that is called Hellenization. So they were kind of Hellenistic in their practices because they really admired the Greeks and their culture. Um, there were some important Greek philosophers. One of them is Socrates. Socrates was a philosopher who really um, asked the question about how do you live a good life and what does it mean to live a good life. And um, he really challenged the status quo of the time, so much so that he was killed for this just by introducing these new ideas that people were really uncomfortable with. And then Plato was one of his students and Plato wrote a lot of kind of moral stories and Socrates was always the hero in every story. And it's kind of hard to separate what Socrates believed and what Plato believed because there was so much in common. Um, but basically one thing that Plato kind of added to the teachings of Socrates is an idea that the world is kind of dualistic, that there's kind of a, a spiritual realm and a physical realm. Um, Stoicism was a, ta or a kind of belief at that time period, and it was founded by someone named Zeno, and it kind of stressed moral order, and it believed that there was sort of a universal reason or something that was sort of... Um, 
a universal belief that everyone should be kind of born understanding. Um, they did practice a lot of self-control and self-denial, the Stoics did. Epi Epicureanism um, was kind of the opposite of that. They really believed that there was only a physical world and everything was physical and that after this life, you're, you know, you just kind of dissolved into oblivion. And so you needed to make the most of the physical life that you were living. Um, cynicism emphasized self-discipline and um, kind of looked at virtue. The goal was to live a virtuous life. And then um, Zeus, of course, all the mythology was really important to the Greeks and that really impacts even culture today. And Zeus was kind of the head of all of the Olympians who were the people who lived on Mount Olympus. These were the gods. And so knowing, you know, Greek mythology that the Romans basically stole eventually kind of impacted every way that they thought about the world and how it originated and who was kind of running it. Um, there is a character named, I'm going to say this wrong, Asclepius, and he was a mortal, but kind of, there's a lot of similarities between the story of Jesus and the story of Asclepius, sorry, don't know how to say that name. Um, he was able to perform miracles, which of course Jesus was a miracle worker too, and so some people point to this story and say that, you know, that Jesus' story is based on it, which is definitely not true. But that's why it's talked about in your book. Um, Mithras was a third century god, and he had a power of light, light over darkness. And so we see a lot of kind of light and darkness emphasized, especially in the Gospel of John. Isis was another um, important goddess. She was a female goddess, and that's kind of important. And um, it was a very popular myth among the Romans. And... In the kind of mythology surrounding Isis, it really did promise kind of an afterlife, which, of course, the people at the time of Jesus were hoping for. So when I do these videos, I'll always try to highlight things, but, of course, there's a lot more in the text that you should read. And also, in a week, you will take a quiz, and this quiz will be somewhere between 25 and 30 questions, and it will come from chapters 1 through 6. So make sure you read the reading for next week before you take the quiz. Make sure you look over your notes. Uh, I will try to reference what chapter it's from if I can in the description of the question. So make sure that your notes are ready, that you've reviewed them before you start the quiz. Once you start quizzes, you cannot pause them. You cannot stop them and go back to them. So please wait until you can take that quiz when you have time and you won't get interrupted. Thank you.